And then, of course, the other thing I ended up doing was, um, it's been a long, long time coming. Um, I ended up playing my first DJ gig that I've done in probably maybe like a year, maybe like a year and a half, I think, of actually getting paid to play somewhere. That's the only reason why I, I, I think they count. I've, no, no, let me just say that. They only count when you get booked, I think, because there's different levels because you don't get paid for everything. Sometimes you go to places and you're offered to pay for free just so you can kind of get a kind of opportunity. But this is the first one where I kind of was um, invited to go and play. And um, so big up Natalia for basically sorting that out and kind of arranging that. That was perfectly nice to see. So that was a nice little surprise to kind of get and because nothing that I kind of worked for, something that was kind of handed to me on the plate, which is obviously beautiful. But um, it was definitely a bit of a wake up call because I haven't been able to do that kind of set in a while. And when I mean that kind of set, because usually what I was doing when I was trying to, you know, progress in my DJ career, I was basically, I identified a little niche that I could kind of maybe carve out that would also allow me to kind of play in front of people on a regular basis, which means you're going to improve. And I could also just play often enough that would make it worthwhile. And the idea behind it was to go and play at bloody bars and pubs that don't necessarily have sound systems set up or that places where most DJs wouldn't want to go and play. But the issue with those kind of places is because, you know, you could probably get a lot more opportunities to play there. You're then having to play stuff that you probably wouldn't want to play day to day if you were a professional DJ. So you kind of have to have this two brain thing going on. You have to know how to play to normies right which i don't like to use the term like that but you know just imagine regular people and you also know how to play to flipping people that want to go out and get mash up on like cat and stuff right so, so you have to occupy two different spaces and of course there's two different musical two, two different musical playlists and whatnot um whatever all that sort of you have to be open to like requests it's a complete mindset of a change and i haven't been around that in a while so I didn't really know what I was kind of walking into, but I kind of prepared a set that was kind of, you know, I thought would cover most of the bases. But then when I w went up there, the first thing I realized when I got there, because I wasn't told and, you know, I didn't get the information. I didn't ask, you know, who, who, who's, who knows what problem it is, whose fault it is. But I didn't ask it when I got there. I found out that I had to bring a controller. They didn't have any CDJs. So luckily, 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 because there was a time when I was thinking of selling my controller, but I didn't sell it. So I've still got my DDJ SB3, that Pioneer one that I was using for ages. But then I just switched to CDJ because most places are playing. It has CDJs in it. So luckily, I was able to come all the way back home. I was able to come back home with the help of the with the bar owner because I don't live too far from the venue and I was able to pick up my stuff and then go back again and play and then of course for the last you know for the next three or four hours I was flipping fighting fighting for my life out there trying to make sure that I'm getting let making sure people are dancing because this bar that I played in it's like a really cool sort of like bar that basically you know um has a really nice beer garden there in the summer it's really full and they have quite a late license they open until two they're allowed to stay outside in the beer garden until 11 because in the uk we have these really strange laws around beer gardens because most pubs and stuff are around residential areas no is that yeah residential areas right um uh i guess a lot of the people like you complain about sound pollution and whatnot and usually they will enforce a curfew on pubs that have beer gardens and say, hey, you can't have people in your garden after a certain, amount, a certain time because people need to sleep or whatever makes people complain. So then you end up having these places that are meant to be sick all, all day round, you know, until people are outside, but they don't let you outside for ages. You have to come back in. So the basically the requirement for DJs that play in those kind of places is to make sure that people are, that are leaving the garden to go back into the pub to go home, you can make sure you can try and catch them which is really difficult because in the UK, I don't know if you guys are saying, but most of the people that go to beer garden pubs usually want to just hang out in the beer garden. They don't necessarily interested in sitting inside a pub. They kind of want to be out, outdoors, smoking a cigarette, talking to their friends and just chilling. And then when that's over, they just go home. They're not really interested in staying to dance. The ones that do want to stay will stay, but the idea that you can catch them doesn't really make much sense. But, you know, you got to try. So I did try my best to sort of like make sure the vibes were there to, so they can get interested and peaked. But what I did see was what I see in other places too. It's like after about 30 minutes, people might pop in and see that you're playing some good stuff. And then the first song that they don't like, they're just, it's just an excuse to leave. But they're not really thinking of staying because they didn't really think of the place that you were at. They were at anyway as being like a DJ place. They just wanted to go there for, to have a drink. And that's about it. And I guess some people also 
if you don't really like dance music, when you hear that stuff, to you, it's like a, an annoyance. It's like a signal that there's going to be loads of drunk people, high people coming in. So you're like, you know what? Kill it. I don't want nothing to do with it. And you just kind of run away, which I completely understand as well. So that was a bit hard to get kind of a handle on. But the big up the security guard that I was there because he kind of helped me out because I started off really slow. Even though I started like half an hour late because I didn't have the right equipment. He did help me out by coming up to me and said, hey, you need to crank up a little bit because people are going to start leaving you have to kind of get going now because we don't have time you just started late da, 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 da. I was like, oh yeah true so i just cranked up started whacking on some classic disco hits and then you know got some people dancing about which is quite nice a bit of synth pop in that um and all that stuff kind of worked out pretty well in the end of it but one thing was for sure when i finished it was a kind of a reminder of why maybe i can get so like emotional about djs and going out and stuff and just how people treat people or whatever it may be because i know what the actual grind is like <laughs> right and i think i'm aware of it and i'm kind of aware of it from both ends from like promoting and putting on nights to doing what i'm doing now by hustling and playing like in little bars and pubs and to also playing in like warehouses where you can play actual techno stuff so i've kind of approached it from all different fields the only thing i haven't done is try to actually make a track myself but i've done all those kind of areas so i know for the most part most people most professional djs out there the ones that i like or love or whatnot they've all come from the same place unless they were fortunate enough to make a banger record and then blow from there or they got a co-sign most of them started the same place they were playing in bars and pubs they were playing in lounge bars they were doing like what i was doing before where you were playing in the corner at some flipping art exhibition or art gallery private view they've done all that they've played house parties they've done all the, the every sort of thing hustle thing you got to do to get to the place that you want to get to they've done it so sometimes I've, so sometimes i can't understand why they have attitudes because they know they've come from humble beginnings and they know that not everybody's able to kind of get to where they get to it's a really kind of cutthroat industry there's probably not enough opportunities for the amount of djs that are out there basically if you really think about it it's the limited amount of clubs especially in the uk places keep closing all the time so not everybody can make it so you you think they'd be more appreciative but they're not and they kind of take it for granted anyway I was reminded of that yesterday because when, you know, it was happening, the set was going well. And then I think from like one thirty or one fifteen, maybe it kind of got quiet and it was hardly anyone there and just some people loitering around in the bar. But I was way down the other side, so I couldn't receive really a lot of them. They were just over there and I was on the other side. So I was basically playing for myself for the last like 45 minutes. Then it ends. And then, you know, by the time it's ending, everybody in the bar that's working there is like wiping down wiping down the tables wiping down every surface they're picking up the glasses and they're kind of in home time the security guards take off their fluorescent jackets like everyone's just done and whatever kind of glitz the night had in my head it's completely eviscerated whatever kind of uh whatever kind of a law of the night out is completely gone whatever kind of idea of like you know there's the afters going to the green room there is no such thing it does not exist it completely gets eviscerated and you're reminded ah oh, you're just like a human jukebox <laughs> at this level you're not really like you know being that creative or anything going forward so that was a little bit of a bummer but what i'm thinking now to go forward because i want to make sure that you know because when i do these things I like to approach them the same way if I was going to play at Flipping Paloma, if I was going to play at Fold, if I was going to play at Burger, if I was going to play at Night Tales, Color Factory. I like to approach it the same way. Like I go, you know, with, with a with a good mindset. I prepare myself beforehand. I'm practicing. I'm doing, I want to do a great job. So what I want to do now going forward, most likely, is I'm going to book a session in Pirate and play what I would imagine to be a really solid four, that, that coming into four hour set. Yeah, it's like 10 to two. So I wanna, I'm want i gonna play the entire 10 to two set that I would imagine, no, that I would like to play if I was there. And then I'll use that as a sort of template that I can kind of work and figure out what works or doesn't work. So if you do see me playing a set on my channel soon, you will definitely see. Um, so don't be alarmed if it's like, you know, really generic type of music and not what well, stuff you kind of hear me playing, which is maybe like, you know, super aggressive dance music or whatnot in terms of techno and house and whatnot. I'm definitely going to try that just to kind of get an idea of it because I need to kind of have it played out in my head entirely. Because that's one thing I realized when I was doing it before, um, a couple of years ago, you know, you know, pre, uh, prior to the pandemic was that because I was playing so often every week, especially with my friend Natalia, we're doing that all the time you kind of got into an autopilot you kind of understood what worked what doesn't work um what you can include and then you could get a bit creative because even though it's a bit 
I wouldn't say stale, but even though it could be a bit monotonous and people can have really boring choices in terms of what they request, you can still be creative in that sort of boringness. You just have to kind of know how to play it, know how to kind of read the room and whatnot and kind of go from there. But it's, it's a good practice to kind of have, but it was just interesting to see how the night just went from like all glitz to kind of sour when the night ended. You see everyone wiping down the tables. Outside it was flipping raining. I was like, rah, man, this is what it's actually like. No private jets, no like uber excels um no flipping gaggle or flipping you know um techno hipster babes outside waiting for you with spoons for the cat now nah, it's just you on your own with your flipping i had my little, had my little dj um controller thing inside my little telfar bag in there like just you know just standing there in the rain thinking rotted this is me mate this is me <laughs> but yeah that was pretty good so i'm happy about that really grateful for it and hopefully i can go on to do more and more and more of this